If you're following along in the pattern with us, you have finished doing your two by two rib for either one or two inches, depending on the size you're knitting, and you've knit a few additional rounds um, that get us from the ribbing to where we're ready to start the color chart. And if you're knitting the baby size, you'll notice that one of those rounds, you decrease by one stitch, which gets us from a multiple of four stitches that we needed for the two by two ribbing to a multiple of 15 stitches that we need for the color chart. So let's go ahead and take a look at the color chart. If you wanna follow along the pattern we're using here, it is available for download at verypink.com. So, this is the row numbers here going up the side, and each one of the boxes that we read this way is a stitch. So on row one, we have one, two, three, four white stitches, blue, two white, blue, two white, blue, and then four white again. We are always going to read this um, chart from right to left. If we were working back and forth on this, we would do the odd number, the even numbered rows from left to right. But since we're working in the round, we're always going to read this color chart from right to left. And this color chart repeats around the hat several times. Let's go ahead and look at our work. I'm at the beginning of the round because there's my color, my um, stitch marker. I am going to knit the first four stitches as the chart shows me to. And the next one is a dark stitch. So I'm gonna put my needle in, grab the other color of yarn, leaving about a six inch tail, wrap the needle and pull it through, and I have my first dark stitch. Now I'm supposed to do two white stitches, or beige stitches in this case, and another dark one. So I'm gonna put the needle in and find my working yarn. And for this, this purple yarn is going to float over the back of those two stitches. And I'll wrap it and pull it through. And you'll see that it's just tucked up out of the way on the inside of the work. And we only see the color that we want coming out of the front. Now, this is called a float. And the tension on the float is really important when you're knitting something. I'm going to go back to the um, the light colored yarn to demonstrate something here for two stitches. Now when I go to knit the dark colored yarn again, what I'll do is I'll put my needle in, give the work on the right needle kind of a tug, stretch the stitches out a little bit, wrap the needle and pull it through, and that will leave us with a nice loose float. You can imagine if I left all the stitches really close together like this and wrapped it and pulled it through. It, my work would bunch up and would never lay flat because this float on the back is so tight. So we're not going to do it like that. Put the needle in, give the work on the right needle a tug to stretch out the stitches, wrap it, pull it through, nice loose float. Now I want to explain to you something that you'll notice in other patterns. Um, you want to be really careful with the length of your float. You can carry a float over, I would say, a maximum of about five stitches. I rarely ever carry it more than that. And that's important if you're looking at something, especially like a sweater or a sleeve on a baby sweater, especially, where you need to have the float short enough so that the fingers can get through the sleeve without getting caught on the floats. Now, I'm going to show you how to secure, if you do have a long, um, a long float in the back of something. I'm going to show you how to secure that now because in this pattern we do have some longer floats. So first let's take a look at the pattern again. I did on row one four whites, blue, white, white, blue, white, white, blue. I'm going to do my last four whites and then I start the pattern over again with four more white stitches. That means that I have eight white stitches all together which is too long of a float. So I will go ahead and knit the first four. And now I need a way to secure the darker colored yarn with the lighter colored yarn in the back where it won't show. And the way that I'm going to do that is to just give it a quick wrap like that. All I did was flop the dark yarn over the light colored yarn. I'm going to continue knitting my next four stitches. You can see here, the float is nice and loose, and I'm ready to give the, to close up that float and knit my purple stitch. So I've got half 
the float here and half the float here, which made it a reasonable number of stitches floating in the back. And then we just continue with the pattern all the way around, making sure that when you're looking at the chart that you remember that you always have to count all of these stitches on the edge. The first and last stitches are white stitches. Um, so we have longer floats here on the first three rows and here from 11 to 13. And the rest of it, I think you can get by. We have one more long float here on seven. The rest of the pattern you can get by with just um, the floats as the length that they are in the pattern. After you finish the color chart, come back to the next video and I'm going to show you how to switch to double pointed needles and do the decreases for the crown.